Alright, so chapter 1024 just released there recently. Um, oh my god, this is probably one of my favorite chapters of the year. I love this chapter. Um, very Yamato focused, very Yamato focused. Um, also a bit of Zoro lore kind of dropped, so that was cool as well. And um, we were just kind of catching up with the other Straw Hats as well at the start of the chapter, but we'll get into that later. It was a it was a Yamato backstory sort of chapter. I mean, we haven't got it all, but we got some of it, which is good. Um, I also must say there were I wanted to point out there's actually some nice parallels between Yamato and Tama, but we'll get into this later. Um, this chapter was just all around solid, like a, a really really good chapter. <laughs> chapter, a really good chapter. I really fucking loved it. It was really good and. Um, it gives you a lot to talk about. Alright, let's start from the beginning. So, uh, basically, at the start, you get a gag about uh, Big Mom's Conqueror Saki. So, everyone's being knocked out from below floors from the fight against Big Mom. Like, Law and Kids fight against Big Mom. And Usopp's using that to his advantage to uh, pretend that he has Conqueror Saki. Which was quite funny, because I genuinely thought he did have Conqueror Saki at one point. I think, it, I'm hoping he does get it at some point. I kind of want most of the crew to get Conqueror Saki. I think Robin needs it. I think all the crew kind of need it. In a way, because they're menacing presence, but I don't know. I guess they won't. Um, everyone but Chopper needs Congress Hockey to me, personally, I'd say. Maybe Brooke as well. But I'd say, like, the Soul King powers might be a form of that at some point. I don't know. But it was a fun gag. And then we see um, Nami and Frankie just basically catching up with each other, being like, do you know where Luffy is? And like, no. And then we see Frankie fighting with Law's crew to get some of the people off the floor and then they contact Jim Bay to tell him like oh what's going on the live floor and stuff I don't know if that means he's going to make his way up and he's going to help uh, either help Nami and Frankie or help uh, Sanji and Zoro I don't know what Jim Bay's going to do next but it could be very interesting also I did I was I was thinking about this while I was reading this chapter because it just popped into my head what like Seriously, we still haven't found out what happened to his crew or what happened to him on the way to Big Mom. So I guess he kind of has to run into Big Mom. So I guess that could be what he's going to do now, which would be really cool if he joins the fight with Law and Kid. I think that'd be very interesting. And then we get a bit of backstory on what happened to uh, Jinbei and his crew. But but that's it. That's it. We're not going to cover the rest of this. We're just going to be talking about Yamato now. All right. So the rest of the chapter was Yamato based and boys oh let's go not only did we get some cool fight bits with uh, Yamato and Kaido I really like how they're fighting because it's like a back and forth right because they've obviously fought a lot so they know each other's fighting styles very well so it's like Yamato's doing an attack and Kaido copies that attack to, to uh, you know deflect her attack it shows that she learned her attacks off Kaido and off trying to kill him and all this jazz which in a way it's kind of proven her dichotomy of wanting to be Odin but emulating Kaido in a way. And it's a very cool dichotomy and I really enjoy it. I don't even know if that's the right word, but uh, I really enjoy that. And But one thing I will say is it took me a minute. I had to look at those panels because I couldn't tell who was attacking at first. Um, like who was the first attack. Because then we get a thing where Yamato says you're trying to kill me. Because every attack Yamato does, you see a thing, you see a small panel where Kaido is smiling. And I think that was done really well because at the end of the day, Kaido is at both, at times, very happy that Yamato has given him a fight in a way, right? You know, given him a good fight. And she's obviously better than she was before because he seems to be enjoying it very well. So she must be giving him a really good fight. And um, actually, at the end of the chapter, we see that she has a advanced conquerors because they had a clash they had a conquerors clash in that way so we see she does have advanced conquerors so let's go i'm really hoping she joins the crew now i'm so fucking psyched for this i really wanted to join the crew i feel like i just i'm just so hyped because like there's so many different things you could do with it right Kai, kaido's kaido's child like that newspaper article i'm always gonna keep bringing up that newspaper article but I'm just like, that newspaper article in the world of One Piece is going to rock the world. And I just want to see that. Straw Hat Luffy recruits Kaido's child to to pirate crew. 
like that's gonna skyrocket Luffy up to a massive degree. You know what I mean? And Shanks will probably find that quite interesting himself, I'd say. Unless she knows Shanks, but I doubt it. Um, but, I, you know, and now she has Advanced Conqueror, so she's going to be a really, a really cool combatant. But I also think this means that, like, Sanji probably does know it, or at least, like, they're going to say something like Diablo Jambe is, like, not only is it, like, a Junarian technique, it's also on the level of Advanced Conqueror's hockey, so that's what keeps him on that field or something they're gonna have to do something to keep Sanji on the top of his game because I after this like Zoro and Sanji are on equal footing so with uh four I guess it's the monster quartet now or the monster or whatever but nah it's always the monster trio but they're obviously gonna get more powerful after this arc to make Yamato less important you know but I'm still cool with Yamato joining the crew. I'm really hyped and I'm really hoping it happens now. Uh, man, and we got her backstory as well. Which I think uh, her backstory involves Zoro's heritage a bit. So that's cool as well. So basically we see the flashback of when she unlocks Advanced Conqueror Taki and is going, I'm Odin, I'm Odin. And she's locked away for a month and food's thrown in. And basically where she was locked away, the samurai that went up against the Odin were. And... Basically, what happens is she she thinks these samurai are gonna kill her, and she's getting real nervous, right? Because not she does proclaim to be Odin, but she is Kaido's just Kaido's child at the end of the day, right? And so she's like, "Oh shit, this is gonna cause me problems." But then they're like, "Oh no, eat up, young one," and uh, like samurai don't eat. And then she has a lovely chat with uh, I can't remember it's the daimyo of one of the regions, but it's. It looks like it's Zoro's ancestor. It's the one mentioned in the previous chapter. I can't remember the name. Uh, apologies for that. But it's the one mentioned in the previous chapter. And we see he looks exactly like Zoro. And they they end up protecting her. But uh, they end up protecting her at the end. And they fight and die to protect Yamato and let her out. It's a very, it's a very interesting concept. Because it also shows why she's so dedicated to the cause of being Odin and freeing Wano because these samurai who follow Odin gave her food and helped her escape from that hellhole after a few days. So, you know, obviously that's going to strengthen her resolve because she has to repay the lives they lost in order to protect her. So it's real. It gives her a really nice backstory and a motivation in a way to a more solid motivation than she already had. Um, but as I said, it also, um, due to it being Zoro's ancestor, and he's the one who gives it the food as well, it shows a nice parallel where, you know, the way Tama gets fed by Zoro and Luffy, uh, the way Yamato is drawn is exactly the same as how Oda drew Tama when she was eating for the first time. So it shows you kind of now at this point, like Yamato is the, Yamato is the present that the samurai uh, nurtured. And Tama is the future that Luffy and Zoro nurtured. So it's a kind of sweet parallel which I really enjoyed. And I think it's going to bode well for the future of the series. Now I don't know if this means... I don't know what this means like. If they're going to interact or whatever. But I think I'm just really... I'm just really excited now. And the little Zoro, obviously he's similar to Zoro, and he has a black blade as well, which is really cool, I'm assuming it, it didn't look like the hockey effect, so it looked like he just has a black blade, so I wonder what sword that is, and if Zoro will get that sword, but oh man, it's very interesting, I really enjoyed this chapter, there was so much to it, with the Yamato backstory, and I was just so fucking hyped, because I'm a big Yamato guy, right, I love Yamato, I love that whole I love that character, you know? Great. Great character. I don't know. I guess I'm just... You know, it's funny, because I know not a lot has happened with Yamato. I'm more I'm more like the idea of that of that uh, newspaper article after she leaves Wano with the Straw Hats. More than I'm, like, excited for the character, but it has, in turn, made me excited for everything the character does. You know what I mean? I really want to see that newspaper article, bro. Um, but... Anyway, there was so much good shit in this chapter, and it actually makes me really excited to see an interaction between Yamato and Zoro, because I feel like that's when Zoro is going to find it all out, or at least the majority of it, 
because surely she would have done some research afterwards to see who these people were because she respects respects them so much and she's heavy on the research right and she's gonna be like you look like the man who saved me or something like that is he your father and then obviously Zoro and this might be in front of the scabbards or all this and he's like look I am um, I come from Shimazuki village what are you talking about that's the or she'll say Shimazuki what's his name and he'll be like oh that's my village name by the way and then they're and he doesn't know what's going on but they all figure it out and we get a little exposition dump about Zoro. And then not only is she fascinated with Luffy, but she also really likes Zoro. And that strengthens her her resolve to go to sea with the crew. Because it has, it has the quote-unquote, I'm going to say, child for now of her saviour on it. So he, she's like, i got to do this, bro. You know? So I feel like this really not only strengthens her reasoning once she finds out that Zoro's on this crew. To be with the crew. You know? So there's so much cool stuff happening now in this chapter. Oh, and there's so much stuff to think about. And her interaction with Momo when he comes up. I know we talked about this last week. Because there was a lot to say with that. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's really fucking killer. It's a really fucking killer chapter. Um, again, the art was really good with the flashback and the fight scenes. But obviously Oda's always really good with art and faces and stuff are always really nice. And the colour, the colouring was also extremely nice. Now I will say people have said there's a colour spread of the 1 to 50. But unfortunately I have not, I could not see that because it wouldn't load properly. So I can't really speak on what my thoughts on the colour thing, on the colour spread was. Uh, so sorry about that. But honestly man, I am so excited. I don't know, the more and more I think about how long what is going to last, I don't know how long it is. Because it feels like we're in the climax now, right? We're getting the backstory of, we're getting the backstory of the princess, quote unquote, of this arc, right? You know, the Vivi, the, the Vivi, the Viola, the Rebecca, ugh, you know what I mean? I will say though, I like how it's kind of been twisted in this way where she's more proactive than the other She's more of a Vivi than the other princesses, right? She follows Vivi's kind of thing where they're proactive in their help of their country, which I really enjoy. But I hope it doesn't bode a bad omen because Vivi didn't join the crew, so does that mean Yamato won't? Um, I'm worried at that point, but it's alright. It's, it's a good parallel and I enjoy how Oda's making the quote-unquote princess uh, more actually active in her story because we haven't got that since uh, Alabasta. You know, she's fighting the main antagonist and putting putting up a good fight. Like, that's some good shit. Oh, and it also is a nice contrast that she is actually the child of the main antagonist, you know. That is, um, that is some good shit. And I, um, I really enjoy it. Also, I wanted to point out, just, this wasn't in the chapter, but it was in the SBSs. We found out that Kaido was friends with, uh, Ulti and Page 1's dad. So that could mean they're, like... Their dad was part of Rocks, which I could be very interested in, right? There could be some reveal. Now, this could mean they might show up in future arcs because, I don't know, um, there could be some reveal about it. I'm, ho- I'm kind of half thinking what if they were, like, what if they were Rox's kids? But that's not likely, you know? But it would be cool to think, you know, Kaido as a sign of respect for his uh, fallen mentor took in his, took in his two kids after, after Rox died. You know, it would be a neat memento to his uh, former captain, which would be real nice, but I don't know. Probably not. It's probably someone we know or someone we'll find out. Like, we'll find out in a flashback, like, it's some massive guy from Rocks, like, the one of, one of the top dogs, and this is their, their kid, and he trained Kaido or something. Or he was the only nice one to Kaido or something besides the captain himself. Or something like that. We'll find out in retrospect. But I do think that also means Ulti and Page 1 are going to have a more important role in future arcs. Um, maybe who's who as well. But I think uh, CP0 will make sure he dies. So I don't think we'll see him. Um, I don't know what else the other Toby Rojo is going to do. Also, we haven't seen Drake in a while. What exactly is Drake doing right now? I don't actually know. Um, he needs to do some shit. I wonder if he's going to like delay like if they do what we think they're doing and they're gonna bring in a marine fleet 
will he delay them a little bit to allow the Straw Hats a little bit of time? Like, be like, oh, they're over here or some shit, or, like, fight against them? Because well, most of them still think he is part of the pirates, so I don't know. Drake could help the Straw Hats in a way, and maybe... I don't know, give him information. Maybe he's the Lord Dump. I know I said Bartolomeo will be when he shows up. But Drake could also cover as a Lord Dump for them. Because he's getting informed of everything. Of what's going on in the outside world, you know. But we must say though. Uh, once again, Oda, that was a banger, banger chapter. Loved it. 